Good morning, good morning, and praise be to God, and welcome to the early morning Bible reading with Victoria Cherie. Praise the Lord, and I plead the blood of Jesus over this live audio, and I plead the blood of Jesus over every listener. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you guys. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to be in the book of Mark, chapter 8. Praise the Lord. For this morning's reading. Give me one second. Praise the Lord. Okay. Chapter 8. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and saith unto them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way, for divers of them came from far. And his disciples answered him, From whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks, and break, and gave to his disciples to set before them. And they did set them before the people. And they had a few small fishes, and he blessed, and commanded to set them also before them. So they did eat, and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets. And they that had eaten were about four thousand, and he sent them away. Verse 10. And straightway he entered into a ship with his disciples, and came into the parts of Damanutha. And the Pharisees came forth, and began to question with him, seeking of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit, and said, Why doeth this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, there shall no sign be given unto this generation. And he left them, and entering into the ship again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. Verse 15. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and of the leaven of the Herod. And of Herod, not the Herod, but of Herod, praise the Lord. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Why reason ye, because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand. Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes see ye not, and having ears hear ye not? And do ye not remember? When I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? They say unto him, Twelve. And when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, Seven. And he said unto them, How is it that ye do not understand? Praise the Lord. Verse 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that he put his hands again upon his eyes, and made him look up. And he was restored, and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. And Jesus went out, and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea, Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? Verse 28. And they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others, one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? 
And Peter answereth and saith unto him, Thou art the Christ. And he charged them that they should tell no man of him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that saying openly and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The last verse, 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Praise the Lord, and the word of the Lord is blessed on this morning. Praise be to God. <sighs> so, in chapter 8 of Mark, the Lord says a lot. <laughs> um, the miracles that Jesus did in front of them, in front of of those in the in front of his disciples he had to remind his disciples that he did bless them to eat more than enough first time when he fed the five thousand and the second time when he fed the four thousand and each the um in each time you know he repeated he said you know did you did you forget and this is what happens to us a lot of times, and I don't speak about myself, a lot of times it gets to a point to where, you know, the Lord has blessed me over and over and over and over and over and again. But when the trials and the storms start raising up, and it'd be something else. Um, let's just say, um, you know, someone, you know, is again, are, they're, they're against you. And um, you're questioning, like, why, why, why? Or um, something that's out of your control happens in your life. I'll just say that. And then you start you know, kind of being moved, kind of being shaken. And then you forget that God had did the same thing for you before. And God is just reminding them too as well. And they did, his own disciples did it. You know, so it happens. But God wants us to remember that he, as the, he is the same God today as he was yesterday as he was. And he is going to be the same in the future. And sometimes we do forget, just like the children of Israel. They, you know, God split the sea and had them walk through it and they still they didn't serve him afterwards they was doubting and you know it happens in our lives but we have to continue to stay in the word of God stay prayed up and remind ourselves that everything that's in the word of God is a promise that God has made and he never he never backs down on what he has stated everything that God speaks and says comes to pass you guys and it's a true blessing to know that the things that we face today are the same things that they faced back then. Nothing is really new. <laughs> Nothing is new. And so um, the other thing that also stuck out to me, praise the Lord, is that when um, Jesus began to tell them about what's going to happen to him, when Jesus began to, began to say, um, you know, those are going, I am going to suffer many things. I'm going to be rejected by the most, I'm going to be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes. And I'm going to be killed. I'm going to raise up and I'm going to be um, raised on the third day. And his own disciple, the one that was with him, the one that was his brother in Christ, raised up against him and rebuked him. But then Jesus had to turn around and rebuke him and call and, and call out that spirit that was trying to manifest itself. And he called that thing out. And sometimes we have to understand 
that the enemy will try to use those who are closest to you. The enemy will try to use those who are in the body of Christ to raise up against you. And just know that that person is not a bad person. At that time, the enemy tried to infiltrate them at that moment. And you have to recognize that spirit. You have to call that spirit out. And you have to rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus that it has no power. And to, to shut Satan off. And that's exactly what Jesus did. And that's what we have to do. We can't be easily moved, you know, when your brothers and sisters in Christ raise up against you or even other people that are not of, of Christ raise up against you. Don't be surprised because Jesus said that he was going to be rejected. So we who are in the body of Christ are going to be rejected. We're not going to be received by this world. If you have been denied, if you have been rejected, if you have been mistreated, if you have been talked about, if you have been, been betrayed, congratulations, you're walking in the light of Christ. <laughs> Congratulations. That is what that's the part of this walk. There the man Jesus Christ did not even have a place to rest his head. And so we shouldn't look down upon those who are homeless. We have to be very careful about how we treat people in general all across the board. You could be entertaining an angel you do not know the next person's story. You do not know the next person's uh, life and purpose that God specifically had placed on that person. And you cannot judge their lives on what you see on the outside, even though people do it anyway. Even though people say, you know, um, you don't have this or you're not stable enough or you don't have this. And, but they don't understand the struggle that you're dealing with. They don't understand the struggle that God has put on your life because he knows that you're strong enough to take it. There's a lot of things that people don't do not understand. And so in their mind, they say it's wrong for you. I'm sorry. I'm trying to turn this messaging thing off. They do not understand. So to them, it's that you're not doing what you're supposed to do. But in all actuality, because you're not pleasing them and because it makes no sense to them, but God, that's all you have to worry about. That's not even, you don't have to worry about that. That's all you have to concern yourself with is what God has purposed in your life to do. There are certain struggles that you may deal with or someone else may deal that I have dealt with that I will have to deal with. And it may not make sense to anybody else. But it makes sense to God. And if you're not going through a struggle, if you're not being attacked, if you're not being rejected, if you're not going through a storm, if you're not going through anything, I think you need to check your record and see who you're serving. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus himself went through so much. And he said, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to go through things. Do not be alarmed. This is what happens. And then he speaks about it in, come on, Jesus. He speaks about it in verses 34 all the way to 38. Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. But whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake in the Gospels, the same shall save it. But what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole wide world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me, of my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Praise the Lord. So whoever is ashamed of God in this world, if you're afraid to speak about him and to share, he is going to deny you in front of his father. And he speaks. These are promises. So, sweetheart, young, uh, my brother, my sister, if you are going through anything, rejoice in it. If you are being rejected, if you are being mistreated, if you are going through, if you're being persecuted, betrayed, everything that may be negative, if you are facing negativity, rejoice in it. Because God has a purpose and he is going to use it for his good. And you know that you are doing 
doing what God has called you to do. Yes, I know it does not feel good. Trust me. Oh, Lord Jesus, it does not feel good when you have nobody in the in 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 your family. You have nobody as a friend to support you, to be there for you. But God is always with you. Just remember that when you are standing alone, you're not alone. You're not even by yourself. God is with you. He is going to be your strength. He is going to encourage you. He is going to uplift you. But the only way that you can do that while you are going through, you've got to stay in the word of God. You have to stay prayed up. You have to continue to worship him. You have to continue to praise him through it all. You have to continue to rejoice in everything and know that it's going to get better. And God is going to bless. God is going to uplift. God is going to give you and place people in your life that is going to be able to be there, genuinely there for you with the love of God. He's going to give you brothers and sisters in Christ for those to come to, for they can, they, they can all come together and pray with you and worship, cry with you. All the things that you, that we desire, God will, God will restore and replenish more than you can even imagine. So don't worry about who's not there in your corner. Don't worry about anything else. Just know that God has a greater purpose for your pain. He is truly amazing and I am a living testimony with everything that I have been through. I had someone tell me, Shri, if I had your life, I don't think I would serve God. The devil is a lie. I had to rebuke that in the mighty name of Jesus because I will serve God just because my life does not look like what you want it to look like or what you think it should look like doesn't mean that God is not working in my life. Every single time God has, came, has come through for me and I am truly grateful, I am truly thankful and I'm not worthy of it all. I thank God for his faithfulness. I thank God that he continues to uplift and bless me in spite of. I thank God that he never left me nor forsake me. And forsaken me. I thank the Lord for everything. And I will continue to serve the Lord all the days of my life, regardless of what others may think how my life should be. I thank God. I will still continue to serve him because he is just that amazing. And he blessed me. He gave me this life. So why should I not serve him? I just pray that I continue to keep my mind and I pray, not I keep my mind, but I pray that he continues to keep all of our minds stayed on him because sometimes we do get a little forgetful sometimes praise the lord jesus amen so let's see chapter eight let's see what i think it was something else that i um saw in here as i was reading mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the lord definitely has compassion and don't think that god is not concerned about the little things in your life if our Father in heaven knows how many hairs that's on the top of your head by number, he cares. He cares the things that he cares when you cry at night. He cares about the little things. You know, he cares about you not having food in your home. He cares about these things. Seek and talk to God about everything. That's how you build your relationship with him. Don't just spend your time with God just on Sunday and just on Wednesday night Bible study. This is a relationship type of thing. This is, you know, this is like, just imagine yourself in a real relationship. You know, you think that if you're neglecting your relationship between, you know, two days out of, the, out, of, out of the week, you think that relationship is going to last? You think it's going to be strong enough to hold, to stand? It's not. You have to put in some work. You have to literally spend time. You got to know and get to know that other individual that you're in a relationship with. You can't just call on them when you feel like it because eventually that person is going to feel neglected. They're going to be feeling used. You pick them up when you feel like it. You talk to them when you feel like it. You dial them when you feel like it. You text them when you feel like it. It ain't no real relationship. So that's it's the same thing with God. We have to build our relationship with God, our personal relationship. Yeah, you go to church on Sunday. Yeah, you may go to church on Wednesday for Bible study, but that's it. And I'm not judging anybody because I can speak about it myself because I did the same thing. I didn't. I thought I had a relationship. I didn't have no relationship with God when I was always in church with my mother. I saw what it was about, but I didn't have my own personal relationship to where I was serving him every day. 
I served him when my mama took me to church on Sunday and then on Friday night when we have shut-ins or, or um, sometimes Bible study or I would go to choir practice, but that's about it. And I didn't understand that, but God taught me the difference. And he showed me about relationships. And in relationships, you have to be devoted to getting to know this individual. You have to be devoted in learning about them and spending time. And our spending time with God is speaking to him every day. Talk to him throughout the day. He hears you. Talk to him about all the things that you're going through. It's better to talk to him before you talk to anybody else because you know with him it will stay there. Praise the Lord. But God is always there with open arms, listening and waiting. And he is truly amazing. He is an awesome father and he will give you all the desires of your heart. He just wants us to serve him with, with our whole heart. And when you're in a relationship with some. One, and I'm talking about an intimate relationship, and that's the type of relationship that we should have with God, an intimate relationship to where we open ourselves to God. Because first of all, God already knows what's inside of us. He just wants us to give it back to him. He wants us to give us his, he wants us to give, uh, he wants us to give our hearts to him, excuse me. So we have to serve him with our whole heart. We have to learn to fall in love with God. And then in turn, we have to allow God to love on us. And I had to learn that because I did not know what that was. I had to seek God, you guys, on so many things or so many hurts and pains and man, things that were still de embedded in my heart that I didn't even know that was in there. And as I began to do that, I began to receive more joy and have more peace, even when... <laughs> Even when the majority of individuals were against me, God still gave me peace and he still gave me joy to continue to walk boldly in him and just go forth and have faith, trust in God. And so I pray that um, this word on this morning bless someone and encourage you that no matter what you're facing, let me say, let me just say this, that God can turn anyone around, no matter what you're struggling with. No matter, no matter what your, your addictions are, no matter what your issues of the heart are, issues of life, come to God. He will love the sin and everything else right out of you. But you got to allow him and give him that opportunity to do so. Because the very things that you think that, you're not, that, that are not able to change, God will be able to change every last one of those things. And you will be amazed. And when you look back over your life, you'll say, wow, God. Your hand was over me, and I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, for keeping me even in my mess. And for and so God is there waiting for you. He's, he's waiting for you. He hears you. Just continue to trust in him. He is truly able. He's amazing. And for my brother, my sister, that may be feeling down, or you're going through some struggles, you're going through some hard rejection some persecution but you're still pressing forth and there's a little sound a little little voice is still pulling for you to pray there's some things that's happening in life to get your attention see god he has all the answers he has all of the answers praise the lord so i praise god on this morning for the word and his <laughs> His unfailing love. God is truly amazing. And I praise God for all the things that he has done in my life and all the things that he continues to do in Jesus' name. And as I do every morning, I would like to extend an invite for you guys to come listen to the word of God going forth every day, seven days a week. We come together worshiping and fellowshipping with God and listening to him and receiving a word and, and getting all that we need and to be fed um, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every day, seven days a week with our pastor, Pastor Jimmy Griffith, praise the Lord. And you can do so by dialing in at 773-922-8270, praise the Lord. Again, the number is 773-922-8270. And I pray that you all have a blessed and prosperous day in the Lord. 
God bless you guys. And if the Lord says the same, I'll be back again in the book of Mark tomorrow. And that will be chapter 9. Amen. God bless you guys in Jesus' name.